What's going on, everybody? A very special October 25th Metalore update. I know we usually do videos on Mondays and Wednesdays, but today was definitely a very special. Now, you want to wonder why it's a special one today? Well, let's take a look at the screen here. And yes, the new Meta Quest Pro just arrived, $1,500 out of the box, 256 gigabits of RAM. And yes, um, I usually don't do unboxings, but this is one that I definitely wanted to get to today. So let's, um, let's really dive into it. What's going on everybody, Israel Galindo? Today is the day. Today, Oculus Pro comes out that's right october 25th we are actually on our way down there to go pick it up we're excited to open this amazing product up and share it with all of you it's, it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great i can't wait it's gonna be such a uh, fun experience to finally witness what meta has been wanting us to witness is the evolution of vr so let's check it out. We'll see you guys inside Best Buy in a few minutes. Okay, had a little bit of trouble getting it. Uh, Best Buy was having some issues with orders, but anyways, here it is. All in its full glory. Yes. Can't wait to open this up and see how it dive does. into it. Now, what is the big deal about this very heavy box on the meta quest pro well one it came out today again making that it's 1500 bucks what how does it differ from the original quest 2 uh you can see there's a design difference so we're going to just go over it um this meta quest pro uh, headset has two controllers as you know has in the bat in the past the charging dock the power adapter controller charger cable charging cable station two stylus tips, two light blockers, two cable clips, protective covers, cleaning cloths, and two wrist straps. Basically, it has the same features as the Quest 2, as you can see here, but it's a lot more sophisticated. Now, one of the things when I was at Best Buy is the gentleman said, believe it or not, because I thought there would be a line and a lot of people would be there to buy it, said, believe it or not, we only have one in stock, and that's yours. That's the one you pre-ordered. Nobody else ordered them in the store that you were at. Now, why is that? Because these are actually designed for designers of VR, for creators of VR. People that are going to be working at more on the business sense of technology versus gaming. Now, it doesn't mean you can't game on it. It just means it's a very expensive toy. Um, so this is the box right here, as you can see. Um, you know, it comes in a nice little cardboard box, as they always do. And I'm gonna put it back on that stand and we're kinda gonna figure it out, opening it up, all that fun stuff. So let me put it back on that little stand that we had it on. And I will switch cameras really quick. All right, so here we go. So this is a device. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this puppy up here. Okay, make sure we're on the right camera. All right, so unboxing that puppy right now. There it is, in its full glory, as we say. Um, yeah, so right now, typical paperwork that we get. You know, this is our, this is our adapters, as they call the light blockers. Now, what are light blockers? Well, unlike the Quest original, that has this full wrap around so you don't have any light coming in this one does not because this one is more augmented reality technology so you have a lot of light coming in this one wraps around your head so these light blockers will go on each side i heard they're magnetized to kind of give you that block on the new one so we'll get those little puppies out of the way you know, spock ears if you will all right now let's go ahead and start with the next piece here now this piece Looks like it's your charging station. There we go. So we're gonna actually take it out of the case. And let's take that puppy out there. And this, think of it like the Samsung charging station or even the PlayStation charging station. This is what it looks like. 
your headset will actually sit there. This is really designed to be on the desk uh, and your controllers kind of intertwine each other on the bottom of this piece here. So we'll be working on that as well. All right, so now we're getting into the actual controllers. Controllers are a lot different than the original. Here's the original controller on the Quest 2. And the new one, you notice that you don't have this ring anymore. So it's weight size, definitely heavier. This is way heavier than this one. So there's a ratio difference. This feels very plasticky, so if I dropped it a few times, I feel like it's gonna break. This feels like gunmetal. It feels like a gun too, it's like boom, boom. Um, so it's a lot nicer, fits really cool in your hand. And controllers seem to be the same uh, wise. The cool thing about these is these have cameras in them, which helps you track the controller better versus these that don't have any cameras and it's using your headset to really track where these are. So that's the difference on that as well. And I'm one of those people that automatically removes the papers off of things. I know some people like to keep that on. Um, straps are pretty nice. Um, they don't feel as stringy as these. So you got a nicer strap. Um, very, very nice to do that. Um, and also I heard that if you twist it and pull it out, that's where you get to put in your stylus that so you can use it like a pen. Uh, and the way you do is you put it in, you spin it to lock it, or you turn it to unlock it. So that's how that works. So we got one control there, so that's your right one. And let's break out the left, which is gonna be exactly the same on the opposite direction. And we'll get those two in the shot. All right, they feel really nice. They do feel, the joysticks are uh, shorter and they got more resistance to it than your typical um, controls on the other one, which seem to kind of go all over the place. This is more precise. You got a very precise movement on this one. Yeah. So yeah, very precise movement on that. Uh, even the return on the triggers are a lot nicer and you can kind of push down on them a little better than on the original controller, which really feels very plasticky and there really isn't a middle ground. You either are in or out. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that motions better. Where on this one, there is a lot more resistance where you can actually feel how you are holding something. So I guess if you're gonna hold, like pick something up, there is a lot more trigger motion on those. So that's really, really neat on that as well. Now let me, um, let me kind of put these here. All right, so now we're getting to, let's see what else we got in here. All right, this looks like it is your cover to cover the front and we'll look into that as well. This is a protective cover and let me show you why it's a protective cover. In the original one that we have, you have literally this. It's, you can't see the glass or the lenses out here. So obviously with the new one, you have a very clear glass that could be scratched. So this is, this is our boy, this is our bad boy right here. So we're gonna kind of take that out, kind of give you guys the full view of that little piece. So there it is, it's nice, I like it. Uh, let me give you the look on the inside. That's very, very cool as well. Uh, lenses seem to be very, very neat as well. It's a bigger lens that I can tell um, and they look like they're going right into your face, into your eye. Now, the cool thing I heard about this was you can wear it with glasses. Now, I don't, I just use reading glasses. I don't use prescription glasses. So, probably not something I, I'm gonna do, but yeah, as you can see, now that is where this protective lens would be. Let me flip it over. There we go. So this is where this protective lens would go into the front of that. So yeah, this looks nice. Um, I do like the back head cradle. Um, I just bought one of these for one of our Oculus 2s, which really does balance it better on your head. Um, extra battery life and so on. So this 
doesn't feel like it has the extra battery life, and I don't see that it really does, but I guess you could buy that version of it. And yes, like I said, I always remove those little stickers, and I know people that still have the originals, just like on your television or your computers. Um, the rest feels nice. This is very, very nice and cushiony versus um, when you get the cradle, head cradle on the Oculus 2, it's more plasticky. So this is really nice, feels good. Um, weight scale, a lot heavier than this guy. This feels extremely light compared to this. This feels very professional, extremely professional. So we're excited to work with that and see. Um, cameras, looks like you still have your typical cameras on the side. You got three in the front. And it looks like two, oh, two on the top. No, just three in the front, two on the side. So, okay. All right, we see what's going on there. Um, power button. Let's take a look. Everything seems to be on the actual um, headset cradle here, or basically the wraparound. You've got your power button right here. And then you've got your volume controls right here. So that's something cool. So we're actually gonna check that out in a minute. So let me put move the box out of the way. And we'll put that puppy. Oops, there goes the box. Um, just to see what it would look like in the charging station. So here's your charging station. This would actually sit in like this. Now I did hear that it's usually best to put your controllers in here first because they, they kind of magnetize in a V shape like that. So I heard it's better to put them in first and then set your cradle onto that second where, uh, there it goes. Okay, now it looks like it's in a full charging station. So yeah, so this is what it would look like when it's sitting on a charging cradle uh, on your desk. So it makes sense to me. Um, and then we'll look at these light blockers. Again, I heard very magnetized, so you should just be able to pick this puppy up and slide that there. Now, they make it seem extremely easy um, on the video. So let's take a look. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not really not bad. I mean, yeah, it, you just kind of have to finagle it on the internal part of it. And you've got these light blockers now on it. So very, very nice. I like it. I do see how it deters your view. Uh, from really getting a full spectrum on the outside. So for now, I'm gonna take them out. And then we will take this. I just realized my camera is not where I want it to be. There we go, that's a lot better. Yeah, this way you guys can see me. So again, um, here's a full view of this puppy and resting on that. So we'll give it a full 360 on that guy. It's like a DJ. All right, so now we'll get to putting it on our head. Let me just move some of these items out of the way. Now, as far as the, as far as the cabling, let's move this out of the way for a second. We'll move this out of the way as well. So let's just look at what kind of cabling we've got happening here. Typical uh, power adapter. So here we go. Looks like it's a USB-C. So that's that one. Uh, we've got a couple of cables. You've got a, a long, this is your charging docking station. Okay, so it's for your docking station. Very, very long cable, by the way. And uh, controller charging cables. Okay, so we'll see what that's about. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, and then you've got your booklet. You know, most of us read them, right? And, of course, your cleaning cloth. That's very important, especially for that. Um, that really is everything that we had in the box itself. So we're gonna take that out, move that out of the way. And then, uh, really, as far as these, we'll just uh, get this stuff off of here and we'll get it plugged in in a minute to charge it. Now, obviously, we expect just like every Oculus device, to have some kind of power. Not fully charged, but I know that they charge about 35%. So we'll take a look at that and see. 
All of you going, just read the paper already, man. Yes, exactly. That's what we're trying to do here. Get rid of that. And all right, well, for now, that's all I really care about. Same thing with these. We've got your cable. Again, it looks like this is your docking station charging cable, and this is your controller charging cable. Now, the difference between the two are going to be, let's open this up, is this connector type that you've got on here. It's definitely a three prong, so you could three prong a, a charger like that. Um, now there is only one for that, so that is very, um, we'll have to look at that and see why that is. Maybe obviously because you're into charging one or the other, but I really feel that in the cradle itself, yeah, here's our full cradle. Um, there really is going to be just one adapter to charge that system. So here is our USB-C. And that's obviously going to be this one that you're going to be using regularly versus using this one that really is just going to be charging one or the other um, on a quick release. They're magnetized, so it's kind of cool. All right, so let's switch over to just testing a view of what it looks like in the main view. All right, so here we go. Take these glasses off. I'll take this puppy. I'm gonna put it in our head first, see what it looks like. All right, so, so far, it's nice and dark, nothing happening there. And underneath the left side, my hand, is where I'm turning it on. So let's see. All right, I wish I had a camera to show you guys, but basically it's the Meta logo. Now, as soon as I put it on, um, it's evenly distributed because of the face plate, the head plate right here in the back. It literally, it's like wearing a hat. I mean, it's wobbly, of course, but there is an adjustment handle in the back that I can turn to tighten it. Um, pretty good, All right, so I'm not gonna squash my brain. Um, now the Meta logo does look very 3D, so that is really cool to get that Meta logo. Um, Meta logo just went away, so now we have a full 3D view. Oh, it's, <laughs> wow. Okay, I gotta show you guys. I'm gonna have to figure out how to connect it and show you that, but wow, this is impressive so far. Um, full 3D scale, I mean, I'm seeing a floor. Uh, it looks like my floor, but everything else is 3D and there's smoke all around you. So it's wanting you to grab a controller and to pair a controller. Now, pairing a controller is gonna be by hitting on the device, your power tapping it with the controller of your choice. So this is my right hand. All right, so we're looking at being able to click on it. Now, it's telling me to push the button on the right. So I'm going to hit that button. OK. And basically, that's how I guess I'm using the, the Enter key. So it goes to the English menu. I really need to get a camera in here so I can show you guys. Let me see if I can get a camera view of this. Let's see. All right, I'm going to take it off for a minute. I'm going to rest it on something, and we're going to get a camera view for you guys in here as well. Uh, let me see here. All right, so we're going to try to do it. I just moved the camera into the inside of the Oculus so you guys can see the menu. So literally, I'm moving it with my head, and then I'm hitting the right button on the bottom of this to kind of select uh, on that. So I'm going to hit English. Tap this one. OK. And I think my controller is ready. Yeah, my controller is ready. All right, so I'm just going to go here, select English. And then stay seated. OK. All right, it's going to go to my Wi-Fi. So I got to find my Wi-Fi. Here it is. And then let me go ahead and type in that password really quick. I'll just type it in. I got to do it on my controller. 
Okay, so now it's, uh, once you put in the Wi-Fi password, now it's just going through how to put on the headset on your head. Adjusting the depth view, which is in the front wheel. There's a little wheel in the front that you can adjust it. Adjusting the lens spaces. And it just kind of goes through your safety, you know, read the manual, indoor use, design for 13 and up. Don't do it when you're on top of the building. Don't do it when you're planking. Don't do it underwater, yada, yada, yada. So it kind of goes through the usual, you know, do this, do that. Hey, don't let little kids touch it because it's an expensive piece. You're going to beat some ass. So there we go. And it kind of, you have to acknowledge that you're not going to use it for evil. All right, so now it's going to go through and go through its magical updates. And it just shows us a little video of what's going down. For those of you asking about the lines, it's because I literally have a webcam directly in front of the lenses, which are giving that um, radiative um, screen frequency on that, which is causing that. So here we go. So we've got just a quick menu as it's doing its updates and doing what it needs to. And it's letting you know how you can use the device in real world and VR. Um, and also it's showing you some of the cool things that you can do on this. These are very Quest, Meta, Pro, uh, you know, two, Quest 2, Quest 1 style. So it's just kind of showing you how realistic you're getting. Uh, gaming has gotten up to the next level. But now you can see more multiplayer allowing you to connect things. And she's like, look, I just want to play some games. He was like, hey, I want to be productive. And he's like, let's just watch a movie. So all the cool things that you can do in this device. And going back to productivity, being able to utilize it, which is what I wanted it for, is being able to work. Right now, I'm building worlds in Metaverse where I'm going into and having a work experience away from the real world. Um, but now being able to do that to a higher scale and connect that technology with your productivity in your daily work life and really giving you what we've all been looking for is a unified experience on that. So uh, it looks like the video is just repeating. We are just waiting for the update to finish. So let me move the um, Oculus a little bit. I'm just going to take a look and see. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's still updating. All right, so we're just going to wait for that to update, and then we'll go on to what it shows next. Okay, so now we get to the part where it wants you to get the app on your phone or your device. It's doing its updates, and when it's doing its updates, it wants you to charge it. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're actually going to be taking the app, and we're opening it up. Uh, you won't be able to see it because obviously I have it on my, on my actual phone. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to see if I can add a device. So I'm actually hitting on my phone, which again, I'm not able to see it at the moment. But let's see. Um, we'll wait for that to update and we'll get connected and see what's next. Okay, so the device just finished updating and downloading. And now what it's doing is it's doing a couple of more patches that it needs to do. At the same time, is I've got my iPhone ready to pair. So I'm going to see if we can pair this guy now. So let me take a look here. It's basically wanting me to pair now a device. So I'm going to select for Quest Pro. And it says pairing headset on my phone. I was trying to get my phone on here for you guys. Uh, but in the short video, I wasn't able to add it. Um, it paired automatically, so I didn't even have to do anything. So now that it's paired, it's showing up on my device, on my phone, as the MetaQuest Pro. So let me go on here. And now it's just having me do a few more things of cleanup on the actual device. So we're going to actually go back on here. And we're going to... Hold the button down on the controller to vibrate. So we can hit continue. All right, let me just grab my control. They don't give you a lot of juice, so it's very recommended that you um, charge the devices right off the bat uh, because it doesn't look like I'm getting any, any juice on the devices just yet. So yeah, here we go. This one vibrated, so 
Got a little bit of juice on the second one, so let me um, let me get these guys together. Worst case, if you don't have these, you can always use the side key on the bottom to move forward. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and usually the way you do that is let me um, let me get one of these controllers charging because I think that's what we're gonna have to do to make this work. Plug this over here. And again, this was a very impromptu video to just get this working now. All right, got the little charger going. It vibrated, so that's good. So we'll go ahead and do this. All right, now I'm gonna just hit OK on that next. Now it is very trippy, as soon as I had it on my head, to see full color and to really see my entire environment through a clear glass. It almost felt like I was wearing sunglasses because you can see the clear glass, but you have full color of that. Let me see if I can just move it around with the camera in front of it. This is obviously, this is normal view. This is through the glasses. It's like looking through sunglasses and it's still doing an update on the controllers, but you can see how neat you're able to get the full aspect of that. Let me put the little sticky back on so it doesn't go to sleep. Yeah, if you didn't know that trick, if you put a little sticky sticker or something on that, it keeps the light sensors on because it's always trying to detect your head. So um, yeah, so we're just kind of waiting on a few things here for cleanup and then we'll go on to the next step. One of the things I did encounter was right off it's updating the controllers when you have the headset on, nothing's happening. It's showing your mixed reality. Um, you hear the music and nothing happens. So what I had to do is I actually had to turn off the Oculus and bring it back up, which brought me back to the wizard. But it did keep the experience of what I had already done. So now it wants to know if I want a fully immersive or mixed reality. Now, for me, I want to do a mixed reality, so I'm going to choose that. And so it's going to do that. If you want to do immersive, obviously it goes into your world like like the original Quest Pro, uh, 2 did. So I'm going to do mixed reality for now. I'm going to hit continue. And then it's basically letting you know that this is the device is completed on that one. And I'm just going to hit the Oculus button to finish. And now um, I'm trying to get you a better shot. Now, as you can see, is I am in my mixed reality. Again, my computer, my uh, system here at my office. And I've got my menu in front. And obviously, a lot of the things that's going to show me are going to be mixed reality type items, which will be connecting and sharing with you once I connect this to my computer to get a better view. But at least you can see the setup of the device. And this is my look from inside the Oculus. Um, again, being full color. I was able to actually even text on my phone with a headset on, so that was really, really cool. Um, and again, being able to see full color on this, it really is like wearing glasses. So that'll be our second video today. I just wanted to kind of go through and show you the setup, how easy it was and what it looks like. And let's see if the $1,500 was worth the buy. All right, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>